Hello! This video will introduce you to dialog UIs in the dialog system. The dialog system uses dialog UIs to show content to the user. A dialog UI can show the following content. Non-player character or NPC subtitles, player character subtitles, player response menus, including an optional timer, input fields, alert messages, and QuickTime or QTE indicators. If we play Demo Scene 1, you can see an alert message, and then an NPC subtitle, and a response menu. This is a quest log window, which is a separate UI covered in the quest tutorials. The computer terminal uses an override dialog UI component that shows a different dialog UI, this one in world space, that demonstrates an input field. The dialog system is modular, so it can work with any UI system. As a side note for programmers, it uses a C-sharp interface named iDialogUI. You can assign any implementation of iDialogUI, and the dialog system will work happily with it. There's a starter script in the templates folder where you can fill in your code for a few simple methods. That code doesn't even need to do anything graphical. You could make a dialog UI that's entirely audio. However, the default implementation uses Unity's standard UI system, and it's called the standard dialog UI system. You can use whatever implementation you want or subclass the standard dialog UI classes to change behavior or extend features. All right, that's the end of the side note. This video will show you how to set up a standard dialog UI in two ways. First, by customizing an existing template, and then by creating a simple UI from scratch that you can build on if you don't want to start with one of the templates in your own project. But first, we'll explain how to use a dialog UI. The Dialog Manager game object has a dialog UI field and a default canvas. The dialog UI field can point to a UI that's in your scene, typically as a child of the default canvas, or a prefab. If it points to a prefab, the dialog system will instantiate a copy of the prefab into the default canvas at runtime. The default canvas has some preset values, such as its canvas scaler, but feel free to adjust those to your liking. When you assign a prefab to the dialog UI field, the dialog system will ask if you want to add an instance or assign the prefab. Here we've selected Add Instance, and you can see the instance now in the canvas. The simplest way to get started is to choose a prefab dialog UI that's similar to your design vision. You can use it as is or customize it. If you want to use it as is, there's nothing more you need to do UI-wise. In this tutorial, we'll add an instance and customize it. This is the standard dialog UI component. It has sections for alert messages, conversations, and QTEs. Note that if you don't use QTEs, you can completely omit or remove the QTE elements. Let's customize the alert panel first. An alert panel consists of a text element and an optional container panel. We're going to customize the alert panel by switching from text to Text Mesh Pro and changing the container's image. Since not all projects include Text Mesh Pro, the dialog system doesn't assume or require that Text Mesh Pro is present. To tell the dialog system that Text Mesh Pro is present, open the Welcome window and tick the TMP Present checkbox.
Next, add a Text Mesh Pro UI game object to the alert panel. Unassign the old alert text. This will reveal a Text Mesh Pro field that you can assign your new Text Mesh Pro game object to. Then delete the old text element. Now we'll assign a different background image to the alert panel. Then we'll adjust some layout groups. This is no different than anything else in Unity UI, so if you're not familiar with working with Unity UI, I recommend Unity's tutorials on the subject. The Alert UI Elements section of the standard Dialog UI component has some checkboxes that you can mouse over for tooltips. They generally control how alerts are queued to be shown in sequence. Next, we'll customize the Conversation UI elements, which are the meat of Dialog UIs. This consists of an optional main panel, one or more subtitle panels, and one or more menu panels. In this case, the Dialog panel's background image is disabled, but you could always enable and customize it here. Now let's customize the NPC subtitle panel. This game object has a component named Standard UI Subtitle Panel that points to all of the subtitle panel's UI elements. It also has settings that you can mouse over for tooltips to control things like when the panel should be visible, what types of portraits it should show, and more. Let's set the visibility to Always From Start, so this panel opens as soon as the conversation starts. We'll first replace the panel's background image. Then we'll replace the UI text game objects with Text Mesh Pro game objects just like we did with the alert panel. This panel has a layout group, but I'd like the portrait image to ignore the layout so I can position it in that top section. To do this, I'll add a layout element component and tick Ignore Layout. Now we'll replace the subtitle text. I want the subtitle text to fill all available space, so it pushes the Continue button all the way to the right of the panel. To do this, I'll add another Layout element and tick Flexible Width.
Then we just need to adjust the padding in the horizontal layout group. And that's our subtitle text, so let's hook it up. It's not required to have separate NPC and PC subtitle panels. You can have as few as one or as many as you want. In this case, let's just use one panel. Assign it as the default for both NPCs and PCs and clean up the subtitle panels list. Now let's customize the player response menu panel. Similar to Subtitle Panel's standard UI Subtitle Panel components, Menu Panels have a standard UI Menu Panel component. Menus can use predefined response buttons or instantiate them from a template as needed into a container in the Menu Panel. This menu uses buttons instantiated from a template. In either case, the Response button should have a standard UI Response Button component. Let's change its label to use TextMesh Pro. Make sure to assign it to the standard UI response button component. Let's also change the button's image. We can also get rid of the response menu's gray background. If you need to use more response buttons than will fit in the response panel, you may need to use a scroll bar. Add a UI scroll bar enabler and assign it to the menu panel. Now let's test out the UI. We'll assign a database and set up a dialog system trigger. We can see that the subtitle panel's padding needs to be adjusted. So let's fix that. In addition, I forgot to assign the UI elements to the UI scroll bar enabler. So I'll take the opportunity to show an alternate way of enabling the vertical scroll bar on the scroll rect itself. And that's how you customize a dialog UI. In the next tutorial, We'll create a dialogue UI from scratch.